Uh, my name is Olga Jurgensson. I am a, an artist and a curator, currently based in, in the UK. I grew up in Estonia and I was educated at the Academy of Arts in St. Petersburg. So, yes, most of the time uh, I was as an artist, working as an artist. In the recent, in the past few years, I started working as a curator. The way, the way of course, one influences another, uh, and I guess because of my work as a curator and because I um, had a chance to set up and curate a National Pavilion Mauritius at um, Venice Biennale twice, um, it made me think uh, in a bigger scale. So basically, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's easier to request building bigger structures, for example, for exhibition if it requires, and uh, vice versa. Um, Artistic practice helps thinking in a more ambitious way, but at the same time, it's quite difficult to distance yourself from when you, when, you know, it's your own work. So, in this case, for example, with this exhibition, I was um, very pleased and happy to have uh, an input by Alejandro Martin, his uh, advice on uh, in text and, and uh, title was quite important, especially that uh, everything had to be done in a very very quickly, basically, we were limited in time. Uh, okay, well, the exhibition here, this Prancedo, was uh, <clears throat> uh, what sort of I planned it uh, as a part of my bigger, wider research. So I wanted to, it was dedicated initially to um, two books by uh, Nancy Friday, an American writer, American researcher on um, people's, men's and women's um, sexual fantasies. Um, which was, uh, they were published in, uh, My Secret Garden was published in 1973 and Men in Love was published in 1980. There were certainly more books uh, on, the, on the theme and research. Uh, basically the, the pieces of this installation, some paintings, so, uh, I, I, I was thinking of something slightly different. I was thinking about uh, how with help of genetics and uh, Perhaps um, recent development in plastic surgery could help um, could help us become uh, more kind of you know, more, more of the same, more uh, looking more like celebrities who we like or models. But with the fact that I uh, met um, met a creator of uh, first sex robot who is based in Barcelona and who were very kind to bring um, bring her bring the dog here. Um, it, it sort of changed the whole concept and I decided that um, decided to change the title and uh, write basically the concept uh, because I, I felt that with the robotics and uh, it might be a step further it might be it might it, it adds the whole whole idea of our development, uh, humankind development in the future, a different angle of course, and, uh, because it, it looks like the robots are coming and uh, they might become a big part of our life and, uh, and some researchers predict that uh, people will marry robots in, by 2050, but I think it might happen actually sooner than that. Uh, so. Um, Yes, it's quite interesting, and uh, that's why I also I also like Samantha as a concept or the aspect of her, I guess, uh, uh, that she can be, she can look like anybody, she can look like anybody, any other woman, uh, well, hopefully a man in the future as well, because uh, Samantha is created as a, as a, yes, it's actually a very interesting thing that we also had a talk with Sergi and uh, where I found out the simple thing that Samantha means a listener, uh, which is quite interesting. And um, she's interactive, she's created as being interactive. And, uh, but also, the way the robots are developing, uh, they, they become almost like independent thinkers, or, or at least they imitate, or start imitating. And, um, and Samantha, this robot uh, responds to human touches and uh, also to to the voice, to the um, 
people talking to her. And uh, yes, and the, the, my question was that whether um, sex robots, or when we will allow to have, uh, whether we will allow to, sex robots to have um, sexual fantasies. It's, it's quite an interesting area because actually sexual fantasies are very different from dreaming, for example, because um, they are basically what people imagine or think of when, when having sex. Uh, and they don't necessarily want those fantasies to be true. Uh, but this is a very interesting area and there is a lot of debate going on whether using sex robots would be um, would be helpful to reduce, say, violence against women or sex trafficking uh, and all this sort of evil, basically, or it will be other way around. Now there is a, this work, for example, here is uh, Madonna Samantha. Sorry, Samantha is Madonna. <laughs> Samantha is Madonna, so basically Samantha looking like Madonna because people might commission now. Uh, not necessarily from this company, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but in theory it is possible to commission a doll looking like Madonna or any other celebrity. Also why celebrities are in pictures is because they often um, feature in people's sexual fantasies, um, according to this research. Um, there are empty frames, yes, I really like the empty frames, I, I like them formally that they are not just frames, but many of them are sort of looking vintage or imitating vintage frames. They sort of question uh, where the history of humankind is um, going and who will be in these portraits, which we have like fam traditional family portraits um, at the homes, all um, people do, do have them at homes. And uh, so I leave them empty because uh, we don't know whether humans will be there, actually, or they will be replaced by robots, or they will be replaced by somebody else. And in this case, I leave it to the um, audience to guess, guess and to think about it. Yes, this, this works, uh, these two works, uh, basically. They are portraits of sex dolls, of who are, um, well, who are, which are sold by different companies, and there are quite a lot of them. Uh, and they represent uh, dolls which which are different, I guess, in a way from, from Samantha, because Samantha is artificial intelligent doll, um, which kind of, I guess, puts it puts her in uh, a certain distance uh, from this one. Um, this work is uh, the name of this work is um, "Would You Like to Date Me," and it's it's a very interesting for for me. Um, I mean, it was a part of the research. Uh, so one of the aspects of, of them was uh, how actually they are marketed, how they look like, of course, because they uh, they have very often they have very exaggerated features, like massive breasts and uh, tiny waists and and often very little legs. So yes, basically how they are represented as as humans in the photographs, um, and then also what what they what they how they are presented by the media. Well, one of, of the major positive um, uh, aspects, I think, was the fact that uh, found everybody quite acceptable. First of all, um, it's quite a specific theme, and not every organization in Britain, say, would be happy to exhibit these works. Uh, although, actually, I should mention that most of the ones I left I did, I'm not exhibiting, <laughs> but uh, even the fact that, well, of the theme in general and uh, the fact that um, everybody was happy for me to invite uh, the sex robot and the producers of, sex, of the sex robot, it was, it was a good experience and uh, it's good that people are tolerant in that sense here. Yeah, that was good. And yeah, uh, I'm very grateful for the help with uh, installing everything. I've been before, well, so I'm really happy that, that I met you, and I really thank you for inviting me. Um, and yes, the name I we took together with a few people, 
because the name Samantha means the one that listens. So, because we were going to put it in, in a robot, we thought that listening was part of what the robot would do. But listening not, not only through words, also with touch. For example, if she has a speaker here, she has an interface, if you touch here. Fall in love with taking care of yourself. So she felt this. I need 10 sentences and I can make all your voice. So I record your voice and now I own it. This, this is a concept that I own your voice. So there's a lot of questions here that are opening in terms of ethics, okay? It's not just the technology and it's happening now. This all is happening now. Right. And, yeah. uh,